Hello and welcome to Fertile Forward. I'm Sadie Minkoff with Sage Acupuncture. And today I am so delighted to be talking with Emily Shaw, who is a local Austin fertility coach and doula. So welcome, Emily. Hi, Sadie. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So um, can you share with us exactly what you do? I feel like it's a little mysterious because there aren't a lot of people doing this work. So tell us a little bit about, about the work you do with fertility. Yeah. Um, so what I do is kind of, it's a mixture of coaching and also so doula support. Um, so a lot of people have heard of like birth and postpartum doulas. Um, and this, this idea of a fertility doula is, is a new and emerging field. And so what a fertility doula can do that's similar to what a birth or postpartum doula would do is to support the couple through their conception process and their fertility journey. So it's providing support to both partners, just like a birth doula would. Um, and it's, it's helping guide them through that process, helping them to ask the right questions, helping them to tune into their own inner guide and intuition when they're making major decisions, right? So kind of helping to slow down the process, you know, take a time out, let's really, you know, explore all of your different options, helping to really personalize um, their fertility journey and their approach um, instead of the kind of assembly line protocol that tends to happen. Um, so I support clients who are either trying to conceive naturally and, and looking for ways to do that. So I have a bit of a nutrition background and I like to focus on um, cycle syncing and eating the different foods that are good for the different phases of the cycle, um, foods that are good for the partner, you know, just to get everyone on board and start the conception journey on a really healthy, solid foundation. Um, and then if they're exploring um, ways of conceiving through IUI or IVF, whether they're a same-sex couple or not, um, helping guide them through that process as well and really providing that kind of um, compassionate support and just holding space for what that journey entails because it can be pretty intense. Um, so it's a lot of listening, it's a lot of validating, um, acknowledging that the, the struggles that they're going through are hard, but giving them the tools to better cope with what they're going through and just really create that solid foundation. Brilliant. So I know that you have a background in meditation as well. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Meditation. So yeah, what are some more of the tools that you help people with? So um, I do a lot of mind body work. So whenever I'm having a session with a client, we always end with a guided meditation. Um, I have some ones that are kind of my go-to, but then I also like to incorporate personalized meditations. Um, if I'm, I, I can record them too as well. So I'll send recordings. So it's like, if you don't want to do this always in a session, or if it doesn't quite feel right, the, you know, the vibe of the day, I can record them and send them to them to listen to later. Um, and so I'll use a lot of the language that they're using. So we do the mind body work of going through some negative thought patterns. Um, you know, like what's a negative belief about your fertility or about your body or your journey that you're really holding on to that you kind of repeat in your head over and over. How can we look at that and really unpack? Is this true? Is this helpful? Where did you kind of learn this thought pattern and then kind of flip it on its head and create a positive mantra out of it? Um, and so really getting them to, over time, really start to believe the positive things and all the things that are working and in their favor and that um, the good and positive things about their journey, um, in addition to the, the guided meditations to help with getting into those deep, relaxed states so that these positive messages can find their way into that subconscious and into their belief system as well. Oh, that's wonderful. That's, that's such a great um, tool to use to really process and identify and then shift into a, a different place. Of yeah. Um, and then, so you also have a yoga background. How do you incorporate that as well? Um, a little bit. I'm not certified to do yoga. So I've, I have my own personal practice. I've been um, doing yoga for probably about 15 years. I studied a little bit at Naropa where I also studied um, meditation. So I can come with some, some tools and tips there for really gentle, um, poses and postures, not really getting them through a particular flow, but here's some things that you can do that are yoga centric that can really help with increasing blood flow and just helping you to feel more connected to your body and tuned in because we tend to live up here in our headspace and forget that we have a whole body down below. Um, and it's just like, organs. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're just kind of dragging this thing around. Um, so just helping them to get 
reacquainted with their body um, in a really safe way because any woman that's experienced trauma or recurrent miscarriage, it can feel really unsafe to tune back into these places. Mm -hmm. So I really try and do that in a very careful and mindful way and just starting with little, little baby steps and then referring out if I need to. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so what does it look like as far as do people meet with you in person or and how frequently do they meet with you? Yeah. So I like to work with people um, either through a single round of IVF or ultimately um, optimally for three months, because um, that's where you really start to get a lot of the change. And so our initial sessions are weekly for about four to six weeks. And that just helps us to establish a good rapport. We get to know each other. And then after that, the remaining of the sessions can be every other week. Um, because a lot of the tools and a lot of the information that I provide is heavy in those initial weeks. Um, and um, ideally they're getting the tools to then do these things themselves and they don't need me to hold their hand through each step of the process so it's a lot of teaching them these things so they can do it themselves and feel really empowered mm -hmm. um, so yeah ideally we work for about three months um, for my local Austin clients I meet in their home so I'm a traveling fertility coach and the reason that I like to do this is the, the work that we're doing is to create really positive changes. And I like to associate the growth and the positive changes with where they're either conceiving their baby or will ultimately bring their child into their home. And so you want to be doing these things out of the home and, and in that space rather than having to go somewhere and, and do it elsewhere. It's really, I find kind of a sacred thing to do it in your home. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, and when you say three months, do you mean before they're actively trying to conceive or during that process or during their interventions? Um, both. So it, it's great when I can catch people early enough on who are just in their planning phases because um, so much can, you can catch so much and, and really change a lot in those early phases if you can, like before you're trying, let's let's make sure that your your nutrient and your gut balance and just all of those things are in place so that when you do try, you kind of avoid some of those complications. Um, but then also people hire me in various stages of where they're at in their journey. Sometimes I'm a last resort. Sometimes it's, I'm about to start an IVF cycle. I'm freaking out and I just need someone to talk with me. I don't have anyone else. Um, so it really varies. Um, some people are taking a break from IVF and they're wanting to try some more natural appro approaches to their fertility. And so it's, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I find that in my work as well, it's really just so valuable for people to have somebody who knows what they're going through. That isn't necessarily their friend, you know, but, uh, but somebody they can really talk through all these things with and all. Yeah. And yeah. And emotions and, and all of that. But that's, that's really a key thing. I also noticed that you um, originally spoke about partners as well. And so how do you, do you meet with both? people when there is a couple going through this together? I do sometimes. Um, sometimes I, it's about 50-50. Some couples like to meet with me together and that's great when that happens. Sometimes schedules don't allow or the partner isn't quite there yet wanting to receive this kind of guidance and support or maybe um, one of the partners is just needing a little bit more of the emotional support than the other one is. Um, and that's, that's common. They, they kind of they're not always on the same page with what they're needing. Um, so it's a mixture of both. I like to meet with both people because it, it takes two to tango in certain situations. Um, well, in all situations, when you're, when you're a couple and you're bringing um, life into the world, whatever that looks like, IUI, donor, surrogacy, adoption, you're still a family and you're still bringing this child into your life together. So I always like to see both people, but um, sometimes that isn't possible and I'll work with who comes to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and th this is really fascinating to me to hear about your work. And I'm wondering if there's like one um, person who you've worked with that comes to mind as sort of a, a, a little something, a story that you could sort of anonymously share with us about, about their process working with you. Um, I have a client who is um, just the sweetest person on the planet. I like, think she's one of she's one of those people who will start the Starbucks line of paying for the people behind them, and is just very giving and caring. And um, she's she's a vegan because she doesn't want to harm animals, and she's just like could not be more gentle and kind hearted. 
And um, she was one of those that reached out to me just, to, I mean, she's kind of an ideal client. She's very healthy. She, she pays attention to what she eats. She's always exercising. And she's like, I don't know why I'm having trouble. Um, and that's really where I like to come in because then it's like, oh, we can work on things other than the physical the things that you're, you know, tend to get overlooked. What's your mental state? What's the emotion? What's going on in your family, your relationship with your partner, your work-life balance, kind of all of those different components. And so, yeah, she's like, I'm about to start IVF. I have, I don't take aspirin. Like, how am I going to cope with, you know, injecting all of these things in my body? And can you just talk to me and guide me through this? Um, and so we worked together last year a bit, and um, she's prepping for her second round of IVF, and she owns a cookie company. It's this vegan cookie company. And um, I had a get together with some of the women from the Sacred Womb Retreat from last year. We were doing an intention setting, and that day her box of cookies arrived on my doorstep, and I got to share them with everyone, and it had just a sweet little note. Um, and it was just, yeah, it's so incredible that you can, you can have that kind of impact on someone's life and it just, it makes this all worth it. Yeah. So nice. <laughs> Thank you. So I did also want to mention that you do fertility retreats. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about, about that work. Yeah, um, so last November, um, I did the Sacred Womb Retreat. It was the first one. It was at the Sumati Yoga Retreat Center, and you came and did acupuncture, and it was just, all of the women were like, that was amazing. We, you guys got to go outside. It was just such a beautiful day, um, and yeah, it was a weekend retreat. I had um, a few of my, my partners partners in fertility come and, and do different workshops. We did fertility yoga. Um, we had a womb blessing ceremony. We had acupuncture. We had um, bee steaming. Um, and all of the food was just the kind of really warm and nurturing food. So it was all mostly plant-based, non-dairy, gluten-free, um, that kind of stuff to really nourish the body and support all the different phases. We did breath work. We had um, henna going. It was just, it was an incredible weekend. Um, a lot of transformation. I got some amazing feedback from the participants of just, yeah, it was a great weekend. So I intend to do it again um, this year and make it annual. It was, it was a big hit. So yeah, looking yeah. forward to this year's. <laughs> Are there any other offerings that you have to share with people? Yeah, so I also run a support group. Um, I have one that's starting up February 4th, and it's a six-week series, so it's a mind-body support group. So um, it's 90-minute sessions. We meet weekly for six weeks, and I facilitate a, the group chat, so getting the women together to talk about where they're at in their journey and how they can find support and validation among um among the group and then i'll also do a mind body deep relaxation meditation exercise at the end to give them a tool each week that they can take home and do on their own and um, continue on after the six week series is over great thank you so much is there anything else that you think people should know about your work um just that don't be afraid to, to reach out for support when you need it and don't feel ashamed if you need to reach out or you're struggling and that um, there is there are people out there that can support and guide you through this and you don't have to do it alone. And um, to, yeah, to, to tap into that village mentality and it takes a village sometimes to help create a baby and find that support even before baby's here, so. Brilliant, well, thank you so much for your work and for joining us today. Yes, thank you so much, Sadie.